cafeteria. Miss Wanda called me crying today. Doc is passing from this life. The first time I saw Doc uh, sick in bed was last week when I walked in and saw him. I said, Doc, how you doing? Bria, he looked at me and said, Preacher, I'm dying. 84, he knows it. His body ain't working no more. I'm dying. I'm going on to be with Jesus. Walked in today, he could barely talk. She said, Pastor, the nurse and I gave up and said, this is, it's over. I looked at him. I said, Doc, who am I? And he said, Pastor Jerry. He knew who I was, but his body didn't cooperate. Eventually, all of us are going to pass from this life. While you're here, see, I don't know if you're going to get to have faith in heaven. I don't think you're going to get preachers in heaven. It's my last shot. I, I'm out of a job. Once I'm dead, I'm out of a job. It's over with. They'll probably be making Budweiser until Jesus comes, James. But when I'm done, I'm done. It's over with. So I'm going to preach as much as I can and have faith while I'm here. I'm going to risk. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. You know how long I've been saying that? 30 years. 30 years I've been saying faith is spelled R-I-S-K. That's it. 30 years. So it didn't change with the pandemic. It didn't change with the riots. It didn't change with the hurricanes. It didn't change with not having finances. You know, we started this, we, I started a church here in 1993 in Crosby, Texas. The first year our celebration, anniversary celebration, 1994. You know what happened? A flood hit and the San Jacinto River came up and lapped the Crosby Motel. There was fire on the water, Tommy. Renee, there was fire on the water. Y'all live right down from it. It was Jay, we had church anyway. 30 folk. We was rocking, man. Wasn't bad for a Sunday night. This is beautiful tonight. Would y'all wave at one another before you sit down? Yay! Would y'all would yell at this bunch over here and say grace to you? Would y'all yell at this bunch over here and say grace to you? <laughs> Amen. May grace be in you. God bless you. You may be seated. Let me welcome Moses and Daniel to church tonight. Guys, good to have y'all here. Thanks for coming. Anyone else first time here? Any other first time guests here with us? Some of you came Sunday. You came back today. That whole row right there. I don't know your names yet. Eventually, I'll get it. You keep coming. I'll figure you out. Amen. But it's good to have all of you guys here. Before we do anything else, would you give the band a hand? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, well, I went out, took Brother David out to eat last night at the Cracker Barrel. He just, he's worse than I am about striking up conversations about Jesus to people. He just go right at it, man. He don't, and while he's doing it, I look him up on YouTube and show him that I'm sitting with a legend. They go, ooh, he did it today in a vitamin store. Just did it just right off the bat. I don't know. He's talking about little Ricky. Y'all remember I Love Lucy? You remember little Ricky on I Love Lucy? That's that man's drummer right there. When he travels, little Ricky's his drummer. Hey Amen. Keith Thibodeau. I had to learn to say Thibodeau when I came to Texas. I've been calling people A Bear, I mean Hebert, forever. And then I found out it was A Bear, Judy. Judy, I, my condolences on LSU losing last week, two weeks ago. I forgot to share that with you. Glory to God. They did beat Vanderbilt this week, but hey, that's all right. I just neither here nor there. I shouldn't say it anything. I should let it go. Boy, the presence of God is good in here tonight. Amen? Amen. Feels good. Y'all welcome David Huff. Hallelujah. Well, it's been mellow. Uh, the praise team did a great job tonight. Um. I, I, I'm welcome two brothers here all the way from Pasadena. Was that who you welcome? I did, but you could double. We doubled. Double? Okay. Welcome, everybody. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to wake uh, a few of y'all up. Now, I was brought up like, like that. And then it changed to, Hey, Mama, don't you treat me wrong. And then it went from there to And here we are tonight With our feet on the rock And our name on the roll We're still rocking and a rolling 
<laughs> Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Are y'all ready? My daddy had a famous saying, y'all something else. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I love every one of you. I love this church. I love what God's doing in this church. And uh, it's a mighty thing. It's a wonderful thing. 
And every time I come back, I always look for your faces. And every time I come back, it's like, wow, this church is growing. And uh, that's a good thing. And um, well, I, I know you didn't come hear me to talk, but uh, can I get a drink of water? Thank you. It won't take long. I was brought up in this Baptist church, and uh, they didn't have electricity. Well, they did have electricity. No running water, no uh, fans, no air conditioning. It got hot up in there. And so uh, I remember the Baptist preacher, they'd always bring him a big old jug of ice water. And I know it's not right to covet, but man, I could just vision me with that jug of water. A lot of, I got a lot of great memories. I got a lot of bad memories. Did a lot of ugly things. Y'all was, if y'all had seen me yesterday, which was uh, 40, a little bit over 43 years ago, you'd say, ain't no way that guy would ever be saved. Because in April uh, 15th, 1977, they busted me for drugs in Newton, Mississippi. And I still got a felony charge in Newton, Mississippi. <laughs> but the good news is, where it counts the most, it's been erased. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so... Life has been a great journey. And uh, the Bible speaks about we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Isn't that an incredible thing? Sometimes I remember when I first started going to church after being away from even the Baptist church, I got invited out to a church like this church. They were wild. I mean, man, I remember seeing lady folks just run, take a run. And I was thinking, this is the most exciting place I've ever been. They didn't do that in the Baptist church now. But uh, I got that invitation. And so I went and uh, just to check it out and, and get this guy off my back because he always was pestering me to come to church to, to get him off my back so I could go eat my fish in peace. I went out there one night and I, it changed my life, but not overnight. I had three car wrecks to go. I, I had that getting busted for drugs to go. Finally, I made the wisest decision of a lifetime when I said, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if, um, if y'all can vision this, when I was sitting there that night, it was like, the devil liked to, he liked to paint me as the worst person in the whole world. And I kept thinking, well, I've already been through a marriage and I've done this and I've done that. And can I ever be saved? I felt like the worst one in the whole church. And the more I learned about the grace of God, the more I learned about the name of Jesus. The more I learned about the power that's in the blood of Jesus, enough to make us all white as snow. Though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. To whom much forgiven, they turn out loving much. I want to dedicate this song to every one of us here tonight because there are times that the devil will bring back in my mind something I did 50 years ago. And I got some words for the devil. Get thee hence, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He loves to bring up my past. And I like to bring up his future. Can I get a witness tonight? All your sins can be under the blood tonight. Can I get a witness? Turn to somebody and say, I've been forgiven. A certain time, a certain place, I visioned in my mind the 
life I left behind I get emotional To know you call my name I feel unworthy Gentle mercy Sometimes the rain will fall Questions flood my soul Have I been forgiven? Or has my heart turned cold under the blood? Yesterday is a memory I've lost from the ways of death. Your love is covered. give him a big hand. Come on, let's get on your feet. Just get up on your feet. Praise the Lord. Amen. Under the blood. We're saved by the blood plus nothing else can save you. Amen. We work because we are saved. That's what this man preached the other day too out of the book of James. He grabbed a good year tire and preached on when the rubber meets the road it's going to be a good year. I thought that's smart right there. I steal that. Maybe a few years while I preach it here. 
But amen, I still that. We're going to welcome that. And Brother David, thank you again. Fantastic. Amen. Every year. Every year. You got your mic on? You ready? All right. I want you to, to welcome my friend. You know, I, I, when you ride around, when Kenneth and I ride around together, it's like the reddest necks, <laughs> two hillbillies. I call him Stomp Jumper. That's what he is. Amen. But all the things that, uh, you know, overcome. When you go to supper tonight, back in the fellowship hall, which will be a marvelous meal for you, you'll see on the table where, you know, a, a month or two ago I started preaching on overcoming. Amen. How to overcome. The hurdles to overcome. All of these things dealing with overcoming. And people, we, we did our conference. The title of the conference is Overcoming 2020. Just dealing with this year. This is the hardest year in many of our lives. Amen. And so let's get through this year. But on the flip side of all of that, you'll see the testimonies of people who have shared over and over again. Amen. Their testimony is written down with their face on it. Sit there and make sure you read that. Now, I've been told to let the kids go two years in down, Miss Sheila. I love you, Miss Sheila. Amen. I talked with Ronnie today, praying for Ronna. Boy, howdy. Bless her heart. Lord, bless the children. Amen. To, to a second grade and down, let them slide on out of here. Hallelujah. Welcome, Pastor Kenneth. Would you do that? If you got your Bibles, let's just jump in the Word. You ready? Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Are you comfortable? I just love saying that. Matthew chapter 7, going to start reading in verse 24. He says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not, does not them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it fell. And great was its fall. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord, that it's alive and it's active, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, I just thank you this day for Pastor Jerry and his bride. Lord, for the little country church. What a blessing. What a blessing. Lord, I just pray that they would continue on with success, that they would continue to move forward in you. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to, to help me and help my, my bride, Lord, as we find our place in you. We love you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. 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 Give somebody five and you can be seated. You know, it, it's uh, Pastor Jerry got up here and he talked about fear and faith. And he said more in three minutes than I can say in three hours. Amen. Your pastor just good like that. He's very unique. <laughs> David Huff gets up here, plays a song, and leads us all to a place of repentance and salvation. <laughs> now, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> just stand up here and take a picture? And, and I, Anyway, we're going to dive in. You know, uh, one day I was cruising down the road on Mobile Harley, and it was a beautiful, sunshiny day, and man, I'm... I'm cruising along, not really paying attention much. I see this truck and trailer in front of me. Well, all of a sudden, stuff starts hitting me like water. I'm like, what is that? You know, and I'm looking up, and, and man, it got bad all over my windshield. And I looked in front of me, and it was a horse trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a mare had her tail up. You ever been there and done that? Now you see, at that moment in my life, I had to make a decision. See, I could either stay where I was at. I could either sit there and take it. Or I could digress. I could move back. Or I could accelerate and I could go around. Now you see, 2020 has been tinkling on us. 2020 has been tinkling on us, and it's time for us to accelerate as a body of believers and to go around. Amen? 
It's time for us to press on and press through whatever we have to do. I know there's riots, but let me tell you something. I believe that my Jesus can take riots and turn them into revivals. I believe that my Jesus can take protests and turn them into praise. I believe that my Jesus can take hate and lead it to healing. I believe that my Jesus can take chaos and bring us to a place of the cross. That's what I believe. You know, we had this storm uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, it was Laura, I think. And, man, that thing was tough. But uh, we decided to ride it out at home, and the eye lined up right on us. And by the time we lost electricity, the last thing we heard was, it looks like it's going to be a Category 5, and it's coming. Well, by the time it got to us, it was holding sustained winds about 125. And it sounded like you were, like if you put a, a million hornets in this room right here. That's what it sounded like. Whoa. And every now and then it'd take, whoa. It'd get real loud. Stuff would start hitting the house. Bang, bang, bang. You're thinking, man, what are we going to do? You know what? What are we going to do? But see, it was just blowing and it was loud and stuff banging. You could hear trees cracking and falling. And all of a sudden, when the eye got to us, it just stopped. Right, right. It was just peace. Yeah. Peace right in the middle uh, of a, a horrific storm. Oh, it, was just, it, went, it didn't slow down. It didn't, it didn't work its way. It just went from, from wide open screaming to peace. And can I tell you something? I, I'm, I, I didn't want the eye to come over me for some reason because that's got to be the, you know, oh my God, the, the eye, the eye's going to hit here. But when that eye came over, I was ready for it. I needed some peace. I needed a break. I needed to be able to, 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 to walk around and stretch and look and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And it gave me the ability to examine the situation I found myself in. See, when we find ourselves in the eye of the storm, God will give us a time where we can examine ourselves. See, I had to say, okay, what kind of shape is my house in now? What was missing? What was broken? Are the kids still asleep? Is everything good? See, the ability to examine yourself is a must if we're going to continue to grow in the storms. If we're going to continue to grow in Christ, I must examine myself. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified, but I trust that you will know that you are not disqualified. How long has it been since we truly examined ourselves in the faith? Come on, somebody, help me. How long has it been since we have truly given ourselves a checkup from one end to the other and said, okay, this is where I am in Christ. Do I like what I see? This, where, where am I in the walk? Where am I in the faith? Where am I when it comes to my salvation? Where am I when it comes to doing things the way Jesus did them? But see, when we examine ourselves... It doesn't do any good to examine ourselves unless we choose to be honest with what we find. See, when you find yourself in the big middle of a storm, in the natural, and there ain't nothing you can do about it, it will bring you to a place of honesty. Once you feel like you figure out that there's nothing that I can do in the natural to make this go away. There's nothing I can do within my own strength to make this thing disappear. See, we love control. We love to be in control. I like to control everything. Except you, darling. <laughs> but when you find yourself in the storm, when you, when you realize that it's out of your control... then you don't have a choice. You've got to be honest. One day we were driving on Highway 110. We were on a motorcycle. And uh, by, there's this uh, road called uh, Smoky Cove. And I'm cruising along probably about 75. And there's this big curve right at the beginning of Smoky Cove Road. 
and it's about a 35. And for some reason, I just didn't snap. I'm cruising along, she's behind me, and all of a sudden, I find myself doing 75 in a 35 curve. Sparks was coming off, my, off the side. I'm just I'm laying her down. And when I come out on the other side, it started. From behind. She just starts punching me. Whack, 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 whack. But see, I had it coming. But you see, it's like riding in a curve. Once you, once you get in the curve, you're in the curve. Once you're in the curve, you got to ride it out. See, and what we have to do as believers understand, you know what, this, this world will throw us curves, and we have to ride it out. we got to lay her down. we got to move on. You know, one of the, the places in the Bible to me that always screamed of brutal honesty is Luke chapter 22 and verse 61. You remember uh, Jesus told Peter, you're going to betray me before the cock crows? And he's like, Lord, I, everybody else will, but I won't, I won't, I won't. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter after they, they had arrested Jesus. He looked at him. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the rooster crows, you would deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. This, this has always been so brutally honest to me. But let me tell you something. If Peter had not gone and repented, how would he have ever found repentance? See, we have to have the ability to be honest. See, divine desperation will always lead us to divine dependence. And divine dependence will result in divine assistance. And a divine assistance always brings divine peace. See, are you willing to examine yourself and be honest about what you find? Then only, only then will peace come. In 2010, I went on a, I went on a, a deer hunt with some guys. They were hunting dogs, chasing deer with dogs. And uh, in Long story short, the dogs run. And I didn't even walk. I, I wasn't 30 yards from the truck. I didn't even follow the guy out into the pines. And uh, the deer, I see a deer coming. He's running. And I'm not even going to shoot him, the little bitty fella. And he gets right there in front of me and boom. And I go down. I took nine bug shot. I was laying on the ground. And I yelled out, hey, you shot me. And good dude, I, I, I don't harbor any hard feelings towards him. He just got that old deer fever, you know. And it, it, it was bad. I couldn't move my legs. I could see blood just running everywhere. And I told him, if you don't help me, I'm going to bleed to death. You know, because he was freaking out. You know, oh God, oh God. I'm like, I just reached up and got him. I pulled him down. I said, if you don't help me, I'm going to bleed to death. He said, what I need to do? I said, help me get these coveralls off. We got them coveralls off. We tourniqueted my legs. And uh, he got on his radio and he called a guy with a four-wheel drive that could come down in there where I was at. Well, they come in there and they loaded me up in this truck with this guy I didn't even know. Well, he heads out to the closest hospital. Well, I start going... I guess into shock from blood loss. I couldn't hold my head up. I couldn't control my body. Everything was just silver. And I remember feeling myself slipping down into the, fl the front floorboard because I couldn't control my body. And, and somebody radioed him. I could still hear. And they said, hey, how's he doing? And he radioed him back and he said, y'all, I think he's dead. And I remember thinking, I'm dead. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I remember thinking, I guess I'm dead, you know. And, and I, I, I was started praying for my family, you know. I said, Lord, just be with them, you know. And when I tell you I had a peace of God that passes all understanding come over me, I can't explain it. It wasn't a peace that said, don't worry about it, you're going to live. It wasn't a peace like that. It wasn't a peace that said, your family's going to be okay. 
It was just God's love and peace. I've never experienced anything like it. Absolutely incredible. See, stuff happens to us on this earth. Happiness is a temporary state that has to do with our current events. Peace and joy is a permanent gift that says, this too shall pass. See, the world may steal your happy. You can get shot with a load of bucks, y'all get thrown in a truck. And the world may steal you happy, but it can't take your joy. Peace is a state of calm, a state of quiet. Peace is the ability to trust God even in the midst of, in the midst of confusion, chaos, and storms. I love the way the New Living Translation says this in Philippians chapter 4. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace. For it is more wonderful than the human mind can understand. And His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. But see, we have to pursue peace. See, peace is something that, that we need to strive for. Something we need to chase. 1 Peter 3 and 10, it says, He who would love, would love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Anybody in here want peace? Amen. Can I tell you something? You'll never possess what you're unwilling to pursue. If you don't chase it, you won't catch it. See, we have to dig deep. We examine ourselves. And when we're honest with ourselves, then we can find peace. And we can walk in the true confidence of our Lord and Savior. We have to dig deep. And we have to be honest. We have to have divine desperation. See, when I want to ask you, and I'm just going to be a few more minutes. The way this world is going, the way 2020 looks, and I want to ask you, do you have confidence that your house will stand? You know, when that storm was blowing through, I had confidence my house would stand. You know, in the... In, I remember it was about 3 or 4 o'clock that day, Sandy and my, my daughter-in-law. They came in there and they said, hey, we just saw on Channel 7, that's our local news channel over there. They said, they're leaving. The weathermen are leaving. They're getting out of town. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they said it's too terrible, it's too strong, and it's too much devastation. They're leaving. What? So they packed up and went to Baton Rouge or somewhere. So Sandy comes in there and she's like, what do you think we should do? My daughter-in-law is like, what do you think we should do? Do you think the house will take it? After Rita, our house got messed all up. When I built this new house, I got guidelines from our insurance company on how to build a house that could withstand Category 3 hurricanes. And I started at the foundation. When I poured the slabs, I put half-inch bolts in there. When I stood my walls up, I drilled holes in the wood, put it on there, and I tightened them up. I put hardy plank on the walls. I did cross bracing all in the walls. All of my ceiling joists are 2 by 12s all of my rafters have hurricane clips on them. I built my, my roof a 10-12 pitch. I did everything that that book said I needed to do in order for that house to survive a Category 3 hurricane. So when they came in and said, do you think the house will take it? I had confidence that the house would take it because I built the house. Come on. And see, because I had confidence that the house would take it, they had confidence that the house would take it. Let me tell you something, little country church, you guys are building a house here. Y'all are building a house and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. 
Y'all are building a house here that, 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 uh, that, that the world would love to see come crashing down. But let me tell you something. You've dug deep. And you've got to the foundation of the Word of God. You've come to a place where you said, you know what, we've got the foundation built. We've been walking, we've been building, we've been doing. Pastor Jerry doing some good teaching, all these young men around here, which I am blessed to see. These young men and young women, and you, some of you not so young men. <laughs> but see, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Who built it? For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is in Jesus Christ. Yes. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work. For what sort it is. See, have you been... As you... Go ahead. You see, as we pursue peace, we have to understand that peace isn't always what we think peace should be. And that point, in that place where I was wadded up in the floorboard of that truck, I was looking for peace that my family was going to be okay if I didn't survive. I was looking for, you know, I don't really know what all I was looking for. I just was looking for peace. But see, the peace that God had for me was so much more than the peace I had for me. Y'all understand that? What God wants to give you is so much more than what you think you need. Why don't you stand with me tonight? We're going to close. Little Country Church, I thank you for the opportunity to come here and minister. You are such a blessing. Tonight, I just want to pray peace for you. Tonight, let's just bow our heads, close our eyes. Lord, tonight I just pray peace. Perfect peace. Lord, not the peace I think I need. But the peace that you know I need. Lord, I want to pursue peace. Because if I don't pursue it, I'll never possess it. And Lord, you said that you would keep a mind, a man's mind stayed on you perfect peace of his mind to stay on you. Tonight as they just play this lovely song, if you need peace, I just want you to raise your hands right now with me. Lord, just have your way, just move in our hearts and our minds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Peace, Lord. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that the natural mind can't wrap itself around. Peace that in the middle of the storm is rest.
challenge tonight is to make sure that your house is built on the rock. And if not, to rebuild, to repair, to recover. You know, when you're dealing with storms, I can promise you the staff that I am blessed to work with can all preach on storms. The people in this house can preach on storms. We've been through some storms. And there's something about it gives, it qualifies you. Kenneth can preach because it qualifies him. We were at his house. He lost just a few shingles. But your son's house up on the hill that you had built was almost destroyed. It showed the difference in the homes. Storms share the level of your commitment. How committed are you when you go through the storm? Am I going to stick? Am I going to stay? It also shares the degree of your maturity. Because when some storms hit, folks skedaddle. Skedaddle is a Hebrew word that means run. Skedaddle. Don't ask me, Aubrey, to spell skedaddle. But it's a Hebrew word. Everybody follow that? Storms are essential. Before a storm, you prepare. When we heard storms were coming here again, we prepare. When you know a storm is coming, you prepare yourself. During the storm, you stand. You stay put. You don't run. You stick. Stick to itiveness is one of the greatest spiritual gifts you could ever have. Stick to itiveness. Just stick. Then after the storm, you clean up and you go on. Boy, is that just as practical as it can be? They call that the caviar, a caviar over on your sermon. A caviar. I don't know how to spell caviar. I never ate any. I don't know anything about it. So before the storm, you prepare. During the storm, you stand. At the end of the storm, you clean up and go on. You're in one of them three places right now in your life. You're either preparing for a storm to come. You are in a storm, whether financial, relational. You're in a storm. you got to stand. Or it's after the storm and you clean it up. But life seems to always be that way, don't it? Father, we thank you for such a good word tonight. We thank you for the extraordinary offering we're fixing to take up in this place. God is going to blow people's mind. Finance is going to come in to bless these two men of God. I thank you for those that are watching right now online. They'll also be have an opportunity to give. God, I thank you for the opportunities on our app and, and online, all the different places we've got. We thank you, Lord. We're going to sow our seed into this harvest. We're going to believe you for the best. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated just for a brief moment. In front of you is an offering envelope. If it's not, lift your hand and we will get you one if you need one. You can give on your phone. You can give on the app. You can give other ways. But my friend, tonight was worth sowing into. Amen. It's worth sowing into. So I'm reaching deep in my pocket. Hallelujah. I'm a, ca I'm a cash man. I ain't figured out how to do all them apps yet. I've never given online. Forgive me. All right? But I promise you, Joseph has. David gives every week online. Folk learn how to give online. I let the young people give online. Us old men carry cash and a gun. All right? <laughs> Hallelujah. So you need an offering envelope. You can lift your hand, somebody. Again, to all our folk that are new here, we thank you for coming. We're going to drop our offering in the back on our way out the door. And then I want everybody that's able to stay and listen. If you say, Pastor, I can't stay, go back and get you a gold plate. Amen. A gold bowl, whatever they got back there. I'm sure they got something to go. Okay, thank you, Sam. Amen. For you to grab something to go. I just got a note on here. I had folk in California ask, would y'all send us Muscle Car Sunday t-shirts? We'll pay for them. We just want, they just want to connect to us. So I just got it. My shirts came today. Thank you so much. Amen. Just popped in. And then people, that's, they, I was in an airport once and looked over and a man was wearing one of our Muscle Car Sunday t-shirts. I don't know how he got it. I don't know anything about it. But they just like wearing these shirts. We're starting a design thing, ain't we? Amen. I got a whole quilt made out of Muscle Car Sunday t-shirts and Harley shirts. Amen. I got a whole new size of Harley shirts going on right now. What time tomorrow night? If all of you showed up tomorrow night, it would be. This is an amazing. I thank you for traveling and getting here tonight. I mean that. Uh, it's, and it, it's not. I said your name wrong, didn't I? 
It's Manuel. My bad. My apology. Forgive me. Amen. Don't sin no more for me. Hallelujah. Got the name wrong. I got to work on that. But you're nice. You didn't, you didn't rebuke me or nothing. You let me go ahead and say it. People call me all kind of stuff. That's why I just say, just say pastor. It's a whole lot easier trying to deal with my last name. Amen. I'm going to have David come up and close us in prayer. I always love to hear David pray. Amen. I appreciate his passion. Now listen, this coming weekend, seniors with a purpose are getting together. If you're a senior in here, 55 and up, I want you in this group. I, I say grace, grace all the time to our, our leaders in this house. So make sure you show up for that. And then the next week, Lyft is going to have a Bible study. Keep praying for sister, uh, Brother Charlie. Amen. Pray particularly for Sister Diane because she got to deal with Charlie. October 31st, we're going to do a trunk or treat here on this property. We're going to do it back behind the fence. We're going to line up and make sure all the kids get stuff here. Amen. So they'll be here. It says New Caney. We need to change that, LJ. It should say Crosby. No, ma'am. We're doing it over here. I'm tired of being out there. I love it out there. I do. We just come off the car, so we got to let get some rest on the property. Let the property heal up. Amen, Susan. And it's just it's so easy for folk to drive by here and see it and again promote it. Speaking of promotion, on the back table, Brother David, is some of your CDs. He done 20, how many done? You done 25, 30 CDs? Amen. 90 year old, still making CDs. So if you need a CD, make sure you stop back there and pick you up some good music. If you got a business, throw that throw this music on in your business, man. Let them hear it. Amen. Let's promote the man of God. Man, and I, I tell you, I don't know if I've that song about the blood, I don't remember you doing that. Y'all? I think it's the first time. I love that. I'm a blood plus nothing man, brother. And when I hear that about the blood, whew, baptism won't save you. Helping little old ladies won't save you. Amen. All that's because you are saved. Not to get saved. Saved by faith in Christ. Amen. Not a works lest any man should boast. Were y'all hungry? Well, David going to pray over the food right now. And if he's hungry, it's going to be a quick prayer. <laughs> hey, on your way out the door, make sure you give. Good to have all of you here. Don't worry. I am hungry. But more importantly, my wife is hungry. She told me on the way over, are we eating tonight? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, thank God I'm hungry. Said okay. Thank God for the word and for the for the gifts that were presented tonight. The Bible says to honor the gifts that are presented to you. Uh, so let's make sure we honor these men. Amen. Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the fact that we can gather together in the midst of a pandemic, that we're not scared, that we're not worried about disease or sickness or pestilence, because you said it will not come nigh our dwelling place and this is where we dwell with our king and so we thank you for that tonight and Lord you said peace I give to you and peace I leave to you which means Lord you have given me a measure of peace but you've also put peace out there that I would pursue so Lord let us to be in passionate pursuit of peace let us to run after you my king my loved one Lord let us to remember that Lord it's by peace that we are able to have our operation, our gift. And Lord, most importantly, I just pray that we would be your love, that we would be your hands and feet, that we would run after you, my King, that we would abide in the shelter of the Almighty. I thank you for these two men. Like I said before, I pray that you continue to exponentially overwhelm them overflow them lord if there is a gift out there that can be received lord i pray that you would give it to them pressed down shaken together and overflowing that even the windows of heaven would be open toward them i love you my king and i thank you let us to go this week in peace in jesus name we pray amen and amen <laughs>